Okay, and with that, let's do some of the uh, some of the inquiries, some of the questions here for this week. Um, all right. Einstein correction. Oh, Jesus. Did I say something wrong about the crazy haired son of a bitch there? Hey, chill, Bill. No more drunk slur burr. Um, in the podcast on the 15th of July, you joked about Albert Einstein having invented the atomic bomb. Actually, he did not. Oh, shit. Shots fired. Was this Tesla again? Shark. Ah, had to get that yawn out been fighting it for 20 minutes he even warned the u.s government about the advances of the german physicists you know people what has happened to like basic grammar here actually he did not okay you say he didn't invent he you joked about albert einstein having invented the atomic bomb actually he did not He even warned the U.S. government about the advances of the German. Oh, I see what you're saying. Sorry, that was my fault. Physicist. I think he's saying he didn't do that and he even did this. Well, then shouldn't you say he did this and he even did this? Yeah, I think I am right. He didn't invent the atomic bomb, but he did warn the U.S. You should have said but instead of he even. I swear to God, I don't even think you guys are like dumb. I just think you voice text these things. So this is how if somebody was talking, I wouldn't notice this, but the second it's written down, you're like, that doesn't make sense. Or maybe I'm dumb. I'll, I'll go with the last one. Anyway, um, he, warned, he even warned the U.S. government about the advances of German physicists. He regretted it in hindsight as it spurred the U.S. government on in their project, which ended in the Japanese genocide. Um, he said in an interview, had I known that the Germans would not succeed in developing an atomic bomb, I would have done nothing. All right, dude, fucking relax. If you think that we wouldn't have come up with that thing unless you brought it up, we, we would have. All right? Because we invented that thing. Did we stop at that thing? After, after Albert died and well, well, I guess that's it. Albert can't warn of of anything else. You know, we went on to fucking nuclear weapons. Anyways, just wanted to clarify that and defend my passed away countrymen. Um, countrymen, where the fuck was he from? All right, Bill, just 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 stop. You're dumb. All right, something positive to change the subject. I think it is underrated what you did for yourself and your family by stopping drinking and going to therapy. How oh, aren't you nice? After I sat there and trashed your grammar. If a ginger binger, (laughs) I love that, drinker like you can do it, anyone can do it. By the way, improve your German accent. No, I'm not going, you improve your fucking English accent. I love how everybody around the world thinks that they can imitate Americans, but like, you know, it's like you go to France and they don't want to listen to your French, but when you come over here, I have to listen to your English? I will. To the store? It's not Z, it's the. Um, it doesn't really give our bad accent its due when you do your Hitler bits. I don't give a shit. Thanks for cheering up my cubicle ass and leave Einstein alone and go fuck yourself. Um, all right, I'll try to get better with the German accent. Um, I'm just doing, well, who I'm really doing is, uh, what's his face? Oh, my God. From... Um, From what the fuck's the name of the movie? Also known as Why I Love the Bomb. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and I can't remember uh, the name of it. Now I'm just not going to think of it, and it'll come up to me. And then the guy Peter, who played the Pink Panther. I have all half information today in my in my brain. It's his version of the German guy is who I'm doing. All right, wait a second. Let me let me let me. I got to look this up here. Why the fuck can't I fucking remember anything anymore? You know, I'm not drinking. I stopped using deodorant. You know, I don't even use deodorant anymore. And you know what's funny is if you shower every day, you're kind of all right. I'm not a big sweater. Turns out I'm not a big sweater. So I had all that fucking aluminum absorbed into my skin for all of these fucking years. You guys right now, first, man, you're talking about liberals and now you're like some hippie. 
Um, all right, what is it? Peter. Wait. Why I love the bomb. Dr. Strangelove. That's who it was. Dr. Strangelove, and I'm doing Peter Sellers' impression of a Nazi. So take it up with him. Um, all right. Space. Dear Billy Lunarhead. You know, I totally missed out on this whole Jeff Bezos going to space and that dick-shaped rocket, which you know he did on purpose because everyone was going to say it was a phallic symbol anyway. So he's like, all right, let's give it a fucking helmet. Uh, Lots of people are coming at Jeff Bezos for his trip to space. The common complaint is that he spent all this money going to space and that money could be used for people who need it. I think this is an uninformed bullshit stance. No, really? You're not seeing all these homeless encampments? First off, the amount of money it costs to go to space is one twentieth of the budget taxpayers hand over to our military to fund research projects to make better killing machines. Okay, but they're just saying he could have taken that money and given it to poor people. You're telling me if he didn't use that money to go to space, he would have just given it to the Pentagon? Um, or you're saying that his tax money would go towards that. Maybe that's what your tax dollars, maybe that's what you're saying. So for starters, the people bitching are actually funding a less productive venture while screaming blasphemy at the rich guy. Well, he also could just write a check or he could pay his pe- the people at Amazon better money. Also, let's just call a hypocrite a fucking hypocrite. If you have Amazon packages coming to your house, maybe don't bitch about what the guy does with the money you gave him. There! Right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the argument. That is a great fucking point. The amount of people that was shitting on him that fucking, you know, myself included, I just said pay your employees better. The poor people, they got to park in the middle of the street and run to your house and run back because they don't have time to do their roots. Uh, Not to mention that this was not a taxpayer-funded launch. Unlike SpaceX, which takes in huge amounts of taxpayer funding to stay operational. When my Tesla driving neighbor stopped me at the end of my driveway to bitch about Jeff Bezos' trip as if I give a fuck, I brought this fact about SpaceX up and was immediately met with, that's not true. Oh, yeah. That's what people do. You brought a point that destroys my argument. I'm not going to take it in. I still want to be right. Uh, It is true, Bill, but truth is apparently whatever you want it to be these days. All right, stop patting yourself on the fucking back, Mr. I'm so informed. Uh, Fuck these uninformed pile-on opinions. Their shit Instagram posts and tweets are just as bad as the cable news companies you've rightfully been bitching about. Uh, You know what? You win the argument again. All right, I like this guy. You made two fucking tremendous points. You're bitching about a guy and you fucking buy shit from his company. And your Instagram page is just as dishonest as those news companies. Yes, yes, they are. I was saying that to a buddy of mine, how everybody now, like everybody like knows how to just take the piece of information that they need and then spin it. Um, Harry, like chicks are really good at it. Uh, my boyfriend is cynical. Yeah, that'll wear you down. It's great for, if you want to watch a comedian for an hour shit on things but after a while you know you need to go get a root beer float myself included maybe i was depressed because i heard my act on saturday night um hi bill so i only know about you because my boyfriend won't stop stop talking about you and he listens to you almost every other day all right did i need to know that you had fucking you don't watch anything that i do i get it you're not a fan all right i'm here to rant and complain about how cynical he is getting LOL. It's upsetting because I've been the type of person who is understanding. Oh, okay. Let's shit on your boyfriend and talk about how great you are and gets excited about life. I try to cheer him up whenever he's down or try to be a lending ear when he needs to vent. Oh, but if you're positive and excited about life, yeah, he's going to wear you down. But he seems to have a vent and finds a problem for almost everything, no matter how much I try to be there for him and help. It's just getting so exhausting. He just turned 30 and can be so difficult to deal with. And I'm starting to think that he has some kind of mood disorder or anger management issues. All right. Okay. I see where this is going because I am. I was this guy. 
And that's right around when it happened, right around 30. Um, I don't know what to do because it's hard to move forward with someone who is constantly complaining and finds a problem with everything and seems to only worry about himself. All right, the way you describe this guy, you should break up with him. I understand that life has its struggles, but he judges and rants and complains about every little thing. It's tiring to be around, and I don't know what to do because he's stubborn and difficult. I try to be patient and understanding as best that I can. To be fair, he's self-aware enough to know that he can get like this, but I'm tired. I have needs too, LOL. All right, well, you seem like a fucking happy, cool person with a good sense of humor. I don't know how bad this is, but... uh you know, it's probably some sort of childhood issue. And some right around 30, you know, when you haven't found your dream job, you're not married, you don't have kids, you don't, you start to feel like you're getting behind the herd. Um, and you don't quite know what the fuck's wrong with you. Because as far as my life went, my 20s and 30s was all about like fucking, you know, taking out my childhood on other people. And lashing out at people before, you know, you get into your late 30s and you go, all right, well, I'm still sitting in this hole. Maybe it's something I'm doing. Um, I would just tell him, just saying, listen, you're sucking the life out of me and I'm young and I'm in my prime. Which means if I stay with you, if you continue to be like this, I'm going to die earlier. Um, so why don't you fucking... Go into therapy. Try to turn that frown upside down. Or uh, I'm going to fucking leave. You know, because I, I, I do have to tell you this. You can't make somebody else happy. You can't. They can meet you and be infatuated with you and go through the initial stages of love. But then after a while, you know, they're going to kind of be who they are. And, uh, you know. Something like that can drag you down to where they're at, which I would hate to see that happen to you. And I hope I didn't do that to anybody back when I was like that. Uh, I'm not saying I'm 100% cured, as you can tell by this podcast. So uh, what can you do? All you can do in a, in a relationship is communicate to somebody what they're doing, you know, that is affecting you in a negative way. You can also communicate to them, you know, when they're doing something good too, ladies. Uh, but you can't fix them. So I would communicate what you're saying to me to him, see what he does with the information. And if it's not working for you, I would leave. Because if he's already acting like a fucking crabby old man at 80, I mean, I'm sorry, at 30, what's going to happen when he's 80? All right, CNN and Fox News experience. Uh, dear Billy Balloon Breast, <laughs> I was listening to your bit on the podcast for the 19th time about CNN and Fox and wanted to share my personal experience as just how messed up the situation is. Oh, I love hearing from people that used to work for these fucking companies. In 2016, I was 17 years old. Oh, this is just going to be you. Okay. And was watching TV with my mom, stepdad, and sister after dinner. We were watching their favorite shit show news channel of choice, CNN. Side note, I had just enlisted into the Army and was set to leave for basic training that summer. Anyways, I can't recall exactly what the segment was covering, but it had something to do with fear-mongering about the conflict in the Middle East. Because my stepdad knows that I don't feed mindlessly off the bullshit that CNN and Fox News. Uh, I am, of course, on the outside of the clique. So he likes to use things like that to start up a fight. He questioned me about the topic, but to him the only correct answer is whatever bullshit the almighty CNN spews into their followers. Uh, one thing led to another, and before the night was over, he told me in front of my mother and sister that I would inevitably die in the Middle East because I don't believe in what CNN spews. Jesus Christ, talk about trying to win the argument at all costs. After he realized that I wasn't going to engage in his stupid, pointless argument, he threw a punch, and I had no choice but to fight back. Uh, anyway, what started as a stupid argument about our desired news sources turned into me getting kicked out of my house at 17 years old. I just wanted to give my story about how these news sources uh, went from being important sources of information to a sort of team or country of their own. 
where if you're not 100% with them, you are against them and deemed an enemy of the group of followers they have. The modern era of news is toxic and needs drastic change. Yeah, not to say that back in the day, you know, they were always spinning it, but um, it wasn't to the level that you knew who the broadcaster voted for, Um, which is fucking insane. I mean, back in the day, you thought wrestling was real and you didn't know who the fucking broadcaster voted for. That was it. Um, Anyway, sorry to ramble, but anyway, I love the podcast and you stand up and hope to see you at one of your upcoming dates. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Yeah, you know, it's the pendulum swings back and forth. You know, I remember back in the day when we were starting all this going to war stuff, you couldn't sit there and question like, are we really going over there for these people's freedom? You know, am I really supposed to believe that the way you've treated the government has treated fucking veterans of all wars, the way that they've treated poor people, people who aren't white and all of this shit in this country, the way they've treated their own citizens. I'm supposed to believe that you care about these people on the other side of the planet who are sitting on all of this oil and the oil is not a factor. And I remember back then, if you fucking suggested that, that meant that you didn't support the troops, which is so insane. Why wouldn't you support your own fucking home team? And that, uh, you know, the, the whole thing is so fucking, the same fucking people that if you said, hey man, I think we're going over there for oil. They're like, America, love it or leave it, you know? And now the vaccine comes out. Now they're like, I don't trust the government. And now why can't I be like, hey, America, love it or leave it. They're saying get the vaccine. You're not getting the vaccine. You don't support the troops, right? So it's just, what it really comes down to is most people, they're just fucking selfish cunts. That's all it is, you know, and I'm not saying I'm not one. Uh, Well, you know, we got a lot of work to do, everybody. We got a lot of work to do. And I think the Internet was a bad idea. Overall, it was a bad idea. Uh, We're probably too dumb to be talking to one another. (laughs) I don't you know what? I don't have any fucking uh, I have no solutions just like CNN and Fox where they just scare the shit out of you with absolutely no solutions. So I I actually, I do have a solution. What I try to be is I try to fucking walk out into the world, hopefully be in a good mood and don't drag anybody down with my own fucking bullshit. It's the best that I can do. And then I try to help out younger people, you know, I think that that's what older people should be doing rather than telling them that their music is no good. Fuck, I did that at the beginning of my podcast. All right, I'm a work in progress. Okay, this this is the podcast, everybody. And uh, you know what I've really learned? I've really learned in life is that fucking, since becoming a dad, like how my level of happiness has shifted, like what makes me happy now? Like it used to be like, you know, I'm a fucking, you know, I'm gonna, I want, I'm gonna fucking sell this amount of tickets and I'm going to have this fucking kind of car and this big a house and this fucking and all this shit. I have now, now that I have kids, you know what fucking makes me happy and excited is if I have a full box of Bisquick and enough syrup in the cupboard, I know that that can get me to 12 noon and I can get, it can get to the first fucking nap and everybody's going to be happy. All right. Not saying I make fucking pancakes and waffles every day, but if the kids come downstairs and they're in a bad mood and I need to switch the culture in the locker room, dude, you fucking turn on the waffle griddle, they, they fucking light up. They light up. You make them the waffles, you get them going, you have a couple of waffles, everybody's full of syrup, a little sugar rush. Yeah, baby, right? Then around 10, everybody needs to take a nap, you know, everybody fucking chills out telling you it's a good fucking thing see if you can take that little waffle philosophy out into your life today then i feel like this podcast was worth it sorry um all right that's the podcast everybody i hope my fucking thing didn't die again okay good it didn't um that's it stop watching these fucking news channels stop you know you know, I'm not saying all everything that they say is you know you know what i i actually do now as i bring my i bring my thermos with water from home 
out to my show. So I've, I've used one water bottle in the last, uh, like, three months. All right? That's my little fucking nipping at the heels of global warming. And guess what? It rained out here in L.A. last night, which is fucking great. It's fantastic. All right. I got to go make some waffles. I'll see you guys later. Uh, go fuck yourselves. Have a great couple of days, and I'll check in on you on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.